Hi, this is George Alger, and welcome to today's segment of Our Ventura TV. Today we're going to be talking about City Center, and our guest expert is Jim Duran, who is the executive director of City Center. Welcome, Jim. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me here today. It's great to have you. Now, I know you do other things in the community. Can we just touch upon them briefly? Absolutely. I'm the uh, lead pastor at the River Community Church in Ventura, which is just a block away from the City Center. And right next door to the City Center, I actually manage Tender Life Maternity Home. Could you comment on that just briefly? Yeah, absolutely. Tender Life Maternity Home is a home for pregnant, homeless women uh, who have pretty much lost it all and need a place to stay to give birth to their child. And so we bring them in uh, and we have them there uh, for as long as their pregnancy is and then for a few months after their pregnancy. We need to do a whole show on that. Yeah, yeah. But let's get into City Center. So let's start out with the broadest question. What is City Center? Well, City Center is a transitional living for homeless children and their parents. And the reason I say it that way is because in order for you to get into the city center, you actually have to have homeless children. And they're 12 years and under. And when you come to the city center, it's a place where you can actually call home. You're off the streets, you get a room, and we put you through a process, um, first of all, before you get in there, to kind of figure out if you're gonna be able to um, meet all the qualifications that we have. But once you're in, it's a six to 24 month period of us helping you get back on your feet. So when you walk out of there, you're actually self-sufficient. You're, you're a, a contributor to society. Okay, now how does someone get in? Well, first thing is they need to give us a call. They need to fill out an application. And so, you know, and people come to us by a whole different, different ways. Um, some are referred to us by the county. Some people are referred to by family members. Some people hear about us through word of mouth. Because we don't advertise, so it's all word of mouth. And so when they call us, we do an interview with them. They have to be drug-free and alcohol-free for at least six months. Then they have to have children. They have to be willing to work. So it's a working program. Our, our goal is if you don't have a job, we're gonna help you get a job. If you, have a, if you have a job, we're gonna help you try to get a better job or try to get increases at your job or move up promotions or things like that. But you gotta be willing to work and that's a big key to it. If your attitude is, well, all I wanna do is live here and not really do anything, that's not gonna work because we're of the philosophy of a hand up versus a hand out. So we're gonna come alongside you. You also, if you don't have transportation, we're gonna help you get transportation. We're, that's one of the goals, one of the ways you graduate. So you gotta be willing to say, yeah, I, if I don't have a driver's license, I'm gonna go get it. If I lost my license, I'm gonna work hard to get it back. And uh, here's a big goal. Uh, you have to wanna get off of all government assistance. So when you come in, Mostly when people come in, they're, they're on all kinds of government assistance. But our goal is to get them in a job so when they leave there, they're, they're not reliant on the government at all. And so 30% of their income goes to rent and another 20% and a 20 of their income goes to savings. So when they leave there, when they move out in that six to 20 month, 24 month period of time, they actually have a little nest egg that they could take with them. We, we've had graduates move out with $14,000 in their savings account so they can go and get a fresh start. Wow, so you're really emphasizing responsibility as well though. Absolutely. Is there a particular uh, philosophy that this is based on? Is it just determined by the board? Yeah, it's a great great question. You know, this about six years ago, the city center uh, group of churches got together and they started a transitional living. About four years ago, we became the city center. And the board of directors said, you know what we need to do um, is we need to broaden this out and not just make it a faith-based organization. Although although we have a lot of churches involved, but we wanted to bring the whole community in. The reason is, is because homelessness is not just about the church and us and the church helping homeless people. It's about the entire community. Everybody's affected by homelessness, everybody. So we started to bring in businesses. We started to bring in individuals. So right now, um, we, the, the great thing about it is right now that all of our rooms get sponsored by not just churches, but they also get sponsored by businesses, by individuals. Some people have uh, sponsored a room because they found out that it costs, it's about $7,500 to help us keep somebody in a room for a year. So if somebody sponsors a room for $7,500, that's a huge help to us. So what we do for that $7,500, we put their name on a plaque. And if you walk around our rooms, you'll see businesses, you'll see somebody who, a mother, um, when she passed away, gave her daughter a ring, a diamond ring. She sold the diamond ring 
and gave us the money to sponsor a room in honor of her mother. Wow. So it, like really cool stories that you hear. Um, we have other people that have sponsored rooms because they were homeless and they were in shelters when they were growing up. And now they're doing really well and they said, you know, we need to give people a shot. So we have brought the community together, I believe, uh, for, uh, for the greater cause. So coming together like that has been just amazing. Yeah, I'm also very impressed though, about this idea of getting folks off of government assistance because I'm not aware of that being part of the policies of other great organizations that are helping homeless. Is that a unique thing about City Center? It is, it is. You know, because when you hear about, here, here's the deal. There have been people that have come to the City Center and we say, what are your goals? Because we, we want to talk to them about, hey, what's your, what's your lifelong goals here? And some of them say this, my goal is just to get on Section 8. So when I get on Section 8, which is government housing, so that's the goal. That, and we go, well, wait, wait a minute, we gotta, we got to change that goal. What do you mean? No, we want to put you in a position where you don't have to depend on government assistance, where you don't have to depend on the housing. Our goal is to come alongside of you so you can get off of those government. But the reality is, is that most of, most of um, transitional livings are, are funded by government. We don't get a dime of government funding. And so because of that, we're like saying, hey, let, let's get off of this. Let's not have the taxpayers pay for this. Let's, let's work together so we can fund this thing. And it's been amazing so far. Wow. Okay. So let's talk a little about the support just to amplify what you just said. So it's privately funded. Yes. All right. So presumably all from the local area. Correct. All right. Now, um, do you have an interest in getting funding from the government to, if possible? Um, you know, yes, if they allow us to do what we're doing right. because we're successful. We're a success, successful model. We, um, just last year, we graduated nine families, nine families who 100% of them have not gone back into homelessness. Can I just tell you in the last four years, every single family that's graduated from our program, not one has gone back into homelessness. Wow. Every single, 100% of them are working, have places to live, have reliable transportation. Their kids are in school. Some of them own businesses today. Some of them are mentors for our, for our residents. I mean, they've, they've come for, for full circle and they're giving back to society now. Wow, all right. So um, I really, I'd like to talk about how uh, this might be influencing programs around the country, but that is, is, has that occurred already? Well, you know, the. Cheryl Heitman was back east and was talking about the different models and she said she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe how people wanted to know what we were doing out here because it was working. Um, I will tell you this, we are the first one in our county um, and the first one really in the United States like doing what we're doing. Um, our goal, our vision is that we start out with this one here and we're almost, we almost got it fine-tuned to the place where we can start to open up other city centers. If we had a city center in every city in our county, I'll tell you, homelessness would be to a minimum, to a minimum. And I'm still interested in how this idea germinated. Was this out of the board? Yeah, so it, it started with a group of churches first, and then it, and then it kind of evolved because the, the, we started looking at what really works. Because originally there were some things that were being done, well, let's try this and let's try that, and they just weren't working. And as we started to see what worked, we started to shift the way we were doing things to, to say, you know, like for example, people were coming in and they needed therapy. And uh, well, we go, okay, so what are we gonna do there? Well, we, we got therapists on, on, on site. We came up with mentors. You know, everybody needs kind of a, a person to hang out with, a person that's gonna encourage them and uplift them because we have case management. Every week they get case managed. So they come in um, once a week, we sit down, we talk to them about budgets, we talk to them about how they're spending their money, we talk to them about what their goals are, all of those things. Um, we have managers on site who are kinda, they're the mom and dad of the facility, so they're there in crisis, they're there if they need to talk about anything, they're there to do their chores, you know, they're, they're, they're there, and they, they manage that place incredibly well. Then, then the mentors come along, and they're the people that just say, hey, I connect with you once a week, check in how you're doing, let me encourage you, let me, you need to ride someplace, you need to talk about something, let's go do that. So we, we've brought financial counseling around, how to build a resume, all of those things, and it was because it kind of evolved into that. What are the needs? What are the things that they really need? So it, it took us a little bit of time to do that, but we think we got it now. Awesome. Um, 
we're, we're kind of running tight on time here, but I wanted to ask you how you could be helped, how you could be supported by the community. Well, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, you know, come on down and take a tour of the city center. You can call us anytime, and we would love to show you around because we're, there's always projects that are going down there. So if you're a handy person or watering, gardening, anything like that, we'd love to have that help. But we can also help, we, you could also help financially. Um, like I said, you could sponsor a room for $7,500, which would help a family get off the streets for a whole year. That helps us out tremendously. We also have a Change for Children program, which is basically 25 bucks a month or more if you want, that you just commit to paying every single month. And that helps us out a lot because it kind of gives us a steady income of what's coming in. We know what's coming in every single month, and it just helps us all the way around. But there's, there's volunteerism for tutoring and for resume building. If, if you know how to do accounting, come and sit with our residents and teach them that. That's what we offer them today. But if you have a heart to serve, man, we have a place where you can serve. So let's suppose someone has a heart to serve. What would be their first step? Um, go right to our website, which is thecitycenter.org. And there is an application for to volunteer. There's also places where you can give. It gives you more information about our residents. There's testimonies. There's incredible stories of what's gone on with some of our residents. Great. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up, Jim. So I'd like to um, let's just highlight the website one more time. And then, is there a summating message you'd like to convey to the viewers? Yeah. Thank you. Well, the the website is thecitycenter.org, and I would just like to say that homelessness involves us all every single one of us. And th the people that come to us, it isn't just drugs and alcohol, it's domestic violence, it's because they lost their job, it's because of a lot of different reasons, and each case is individual. It's a, it's a specific case. And just because you see someone on the street panhandling, that's, that's not all your homelessness. We're talking about families that need help. So I just, I want people to know, the families that we're helping, they are families that, that want the help, that are looking to, to progress, and they're doing phenomenal work. When you come alongside of us, man, it, it's amazing what life, how lives are being changed at the city center. So I just want people to know that what we're doing is absolutely working and we could use their help. Yeah, and I'd like to sneak in a statistic if you happen to have one, but you know, there's a certain visibility of homelessness, of course, around town, but do you know what percent of the population that actually represents? About 10. Wow. Yeah, of the homeless population. I mean, when you look at it, when you look at the people that are on the streets because they want to be on the street, of the homeless population, it's only about 10%, but that's who you see. Wow, so there's a lot more homelessness than we don't see. Yeah. You know, have any numbers on that? Oh, yeah. It, well, you know, right now, just in the city of Ventura, you're looking at over 300 people that are homeless. And those aren't even all accounted for. Wow. Those are just people that were counted in the last count. There, if you, if you look at the Ventura Unified School District, there is 1,400 kids under housed right now. Wow. Yeah. Jim, thank you very much for what you're doing. Thank you for having me here. This is George Alger signing off for this segment of Our Ventura TV. Until we meet again.